Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm so excited we're doing another trend video. I haven't done this since last year and maybe I'll start doing these a little more frequently like when the season changes but for now I know it's a little late. We're gonna be talking about 2021 trends. Of course these are not trends you have to follow. By no means am I saying you should do these or have to do them. This is just what I think. I think trends are kind of arbitrary anyway. They're silly. They're fun to play around with. I like trends, but by no means do I follow them all the time or follow all of them or ever feel an obligation to. They're just a fun way to follow fashion and see how people are influenced by designers and past periods and what's going on in the world. So that's all this is. Don't take it too seriously. These are just what I think, my predictions mixed with some trend research I've done. 2021 is going to be a very interesting year for fashion as 2020 was. Fashion always reflects political climate, what's going on, how people are feeling. So I'm gonna talk about what the trends are, why they are that way, and most importantly, where you guys can shop them. Before even the video, we do have a sponsor for this video. Yeah! One of my favorite brands to work with ever because I actually use them pretty much every single day because I shop online every single day. So today's video is sponsored by ShopTagger. ShopTagger is a Google Chrome browser extension and mobile app that helps you save money and organize your shopping. So for example, I was shopping at ASOS the other day, checked for coupons with ShopTagger and ended up saving $64. The coupon finder is only available when using the Chrome extension, but there's a lot of other features on the app too. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So first you just download it, it's very easy and there will be a link below to download. And then it's on Google Chrome and you have a whole dashboard of items you've saved. One of my favorite things is that you can organize your shopping into lists. So for example, I'd save these pants to a spring break list and it'll both tell me once they're on sale or back in stock, or I'll just have it there so I can see everything I want and not have it in separate carts on separate websites. I also ended up getting cash back from Revolve the other day. They have the cash back feature on the Chrome extension and the mobile app. So you can scroll through and see where they have cash back and how much. And then from there, you can go click on it and start shopping, but you don't even need to go through the ShopTiger dashboard. It'll just show up whenever you're shopping on websites. So after you've saved items, you can go look at everything on your dashboard and you can either check if things are on sale, if they're back in stock, or you can just look at through your lists and kind of see what you want to buy. You can also get an email or mobile notification every time you've saved an item goes on sale. I do that with an email so I know when something I want goes on sale and I can get it. Check it out. I love it. There'll be a link below. I actually use it all the time. So thank you ShopTiger for sponsoring this video. Now let's get on with the trends. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is lingerie and underwear as outerwear. Now we've seen this, this isn't a new trend whatsoever. Instead of the modern like lace bodysuit that we see, we're gonna see more of like 50s inspired, even 1800s, 1900s inspired. Of course, a trend we all have already seen probably on TikTok is the corsets. That has definitely hit mass markets and it's definitely more of a mainstream clothing. Those originated in France around the 1500s. So we're definitely gonna see a lot in that time period. Bridgerton, which everyone is obsessed with right now and is no doubt gonna influence fashion, is based in the Regency area. So we're, area, era. I keep saying area 800 times, so we're going with that. Of course, we've all seen the Vivian Westwood corset, or if you're more familiar with the pearl necklace that have kind of blew up on TikTok and things like that, that's already kind of trickled down into the mass markets. But what I think we're gonna see now is more so like bloomers, these kind of ruffled shorts. We're gonna see like hot pants, things like that worn as shorts, which I have been doing a lot of. Girdles worn as skirts, like this kind of Galliano Dior moment, which I am so inspired by. So think 90s Galliano inspired by French Revolution, not so much Jacques Mousse inspired by modern clean lines. So this isn't really a change in the trend, it's a change in the way that the trend is done and the style of the trend. So instead of those kind of modern clean lines that we talked about, we're gonna see more of kind of the cottagecore vintage influence on these. So ruffles, vintage floral prints, things like that. Opulent laces, baby doll nightgown styles. We're gonna see, I think, a lot of sheer nightgowns. The best place to find these is obviously vintage sellers. I wouldn't recommend a modern designer for these. Any sort of vintage style clothing, I think getting the actual vintage is always better than vintage inspired. Well, most of the time. But I'm gonna link some of my favorite eBay and Etsy sellers below for this stuff. I'm a little apprehensive because these are like my babies because I've spent hours upon hours finding these sellers and digging through eBay and Etsy to find these. So I hope you guys enjoy them. 
I am going to mention a couple of the places in here where you can get them, but mostly I will just link a bunch of examples of things that you could buy now below. But then again, some things might not really be available because these are kind of like ideas of what I see. The next thing I don't necessarily have a name for because it's kind of an umbrella which, with a couple things under it. Vintage inspired eclectic clothing. Now, I know that sounds weird, but let me explain. So in on one hand we have this eclectic folklore, which is something I saw on a forecasting website which is this style. A piece under this umbrella, I think the sweater vest is going to turn into these kind of riding vests, kind of what you would have seen like your grandma wear or your tour guide wear. We're gonna transition the sweater vest trend, which people are already really comfortable with, so it's a really easy transition into the leather riding vest. We've already seen Bella Hadid wear this. So it's very Eastern European influenced, think rolling hills, horses, things like that. So we're gonna get fringes, tapestry patterns, suede, cowboy boots, of course, that's a huge trend already. And that's kind of under that eclectic Western theme, right? So then on the other side, we have our 60s and 70s revival. And I wanna talk a little bit more about why that's happening, because I think that's the most interesting part of it. And then I'll get into the trends and where you can get it. Fashion is regressing to these 60s and 70s because the time periods are so comparable. The younger generations are completely rejecting the government. They hate Trump. They hate the way the virus was handled. Everyone is mad at the US right now. And I'm talking about mainly US markets, but this can pretty much be applied everywhere. This experience is just the US, but that's just what I know, so what I'll be talking about. We have the spiritual movement, which is right on par with the 70s. People romanticizing these like hippie parents. We have the Black Lives Matter movement and still have, which it completely mirrored the civil rights movement of the 50s, 60s. We're locked in our houses for nearly a year and everyone has all of this time for personal growth, personal development. Even if you didn't do it, you most certainly must have gotten more comfortable with your own company. But now we have all these people who have kind of come into their own and been able to experiment with their style because they've just been within the walls of their own house and their own comfort. So they finally feel comfortable with that for the first time, whereas normally you'd be at work or school and you're too afraid to experiment with your style. So we're gonna have all of these people coming out of this pandemic with these bright, colorful, opulent, exquisite clothing. And that's what we saw in 2020, like this explosion of color and funky clothing and all these different pieces that we've never seen before and people experimenting. Once we emerge out of this pandemic and we can go back to our lives and see people and party, everyone is gonna wanna go all out and they're gonna come out, wanna come out as their most extravagant self. So what are they gonna want? Embellishments, colors, fun pattern, clothing that says something about them because it's been so long that we've been able to communicate with each other through our clothing, if that makes sense. So that this explosion of different styles we had in 2020 is really just a reflection of the escapism that comes with an insane worldwide event like this. And now that I'm talking about this, I've been talking for like 30 minutes about this and I might just make a whole video about like why style changed so much in 2020. If you're interested in that, let me know because this seems like this would be an interesting topic to talk about. We're gonna see a continuance of the mixing pattern. So we've seen plaid, I think it's gonna turn kind of into more of a futuristic plaid or like a retro futuristic. So that means you're mixing like past and future nostalgia, if that makes sense. So. Future nostalgia is like your hope for the of what the future will be like and kind of a dreamy sense of it. So those metallics that we see are gonna continue. Some like retro florals, like this is a perfect example. I have this bathing suit, like these kind of florals for spring and summer. I know we kind of already saw those, but I think I could see them coming a little stronger. These kind of baroque patterns, um, thick fabrics, things like that. With warm tones like maroons, burnt orange, mustard yellow. And then I think we're gonna see a direct adaptation of some of these 60s and 70s trends. So the capes, I recently did a styling video with like a cape as a dress, we love that. Space age, what does that lead to? Metallics, go-go boots, hot pants, mod style, these super micro minis. We've seen a lot of mini skirts, but they were more sort of 2000 style. But the next thing I wanna talk about is modular design. We have seen some of this in 2020, but I think it's gonna really explode in 2021. Basically like detached pieces. So a shirt with kind of a detached sleeve or leg warmers, hats, things like that. But like hats that aren't just regular hats that kind of go with the outfit, if that makes sense. Gloves, both full length and just kind of sleeve gloves, I could see being huge. We're already seeing gloves kind of become a 
thing in like the outskirts and I think they're definitely gonna become a little more popular in terms of like people using them as going out outfits again with this extravagance that people aren't gonna be as afraid to kind of be themselves when they can finally go out again and all of that and to go along with that kind of matching sets of these things so like a matching glove and leg warmer set or a matching hat fuzzy hat and boots props to my girl Sarah on TikTok. I'll link her username. She's a big fuzzy hat girl and I think that bitch is gonna single-handedly bring it back. Another thing, this is just kind of a small trend but it was worth mentioning because I love it. I think women's three-piece suits are gonna be huge again. Seeing a, I know pantsuits have been big forever but with a vest. I think we're gonna see the traditional pantsuit kind of transition to having a vest very commonly and just kind of these more mature styles growing on people because we've had to mature so quickly that's something I found with myself I've my style has really matured because I feel like 40 years older than when I went into this <laughs> so next I want to talk about minimalism this is kind of an idea I've seen floating around and I think it's very interesting so next I want to talk about minimalism and kind of the transition that they're projected to go under basically minimalism you think at least I think of like light colors beiges denims white t-shirts things like that when I typically associate minimalism, but I think it's going to go from that kind of light color palette to very dark, hefty pieces because you want these really nice quality, thick pieces to last you a lifetime. That's kind of the idea with minimalism. So in my mind, minimalists are typically thought of as kind of the counterculture of fashion and the actual sustainable group of fashion because they're really buying them for a lifetime and not mass buying. Whereas there's kind of this other group that has this like pseudo passion for sustainability, but is still mass buying fashion. This group is kind of taking over the sustainability movement in my eye and kind of shying away from minimalists. So I think that that kind of forces a transition. I don't know, just some fun ideas. Okay, I think that's all I have. If you guys wanna see that video of me kind of analyzing 2020 fashion and why I think it changed so much, I'd be really interested to talk about that. Also, life updates for anyone who's interested. I said I was gonna do home series for New York. Turns out I'm moving into a furnished apartment, so like, there's no home series for that. So I'm really sorry, because I did say I would do that in my last third call. Um, any other updates? There will be New York vlogs when I move back to New York, so that's exciting. Sorry I don't post often. I suck. I always say I'm gonna and then I don't. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna go follow my Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Depop, it's all right here and linked in the description. And along with all of the resources you can get this. I love you so very much.